By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in the beautiful Amsterdam, my hometown, for round number three of the Raging Bull series. And in round number three, we have Mono Green piloted by Wouter. Yes, he is back. And he is taking on Yap, who is playing Twiddle Volt. And uh, that means we're in for a very entertaining match, I think, because we have two different strategies, aggro versus combo. Now, before I jump into the deck tech section of the video, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, check out the deck techs later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. It's as simple as that. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about the tournament, the Raging Bull series, and you can find more information about the rules. And there is also a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because yes, I have my very own Patreon program. So please consider becoming a sponsor of the show and support me as a content creator. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the ins and outs. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Wouter. Let's have a look. And here we see the mono green deck of Wouter. So let's have a look. So first of all, it's completely green. What you see now a lot is people splashing a little bit of black in it, but we don't see that here. So it's just completely green. We also see a lot of one one. So a lot of one drops, four Lanawar Elves, four Scavenger Folks, four Script Sprites, uh, two Emerald Dragonflies and two Whirling Dervish, all main, they're all 1-1s, one -ones, so it makes sense here that Wouter is playing with three Pendlehavens. I think those Pendlehavens can be very valuable with this creature base. Um, he's also playing with four Argovian Pixies, of course an all-star against the Mistress Factories, and he's playing with two Spitting Slugs, and there are of course some cards missing here, so in the creature base we don't see any Urnum Jins, and that means that he's got space to play City in a Bottle main, so there's something to say for that choice. You see more people doing that, going for Spitting Slug kind of as the high-end creature, it's a 2-4 for three, and not playing the Urnum Jin, which is of course a 4-5 for four, a very good creature, but Arabian Night, so if you run into a city in a bottle, it's a problem. And also it means you cannot play a city in a bottle. And you know, that can also be a problem, especially when you like run in against like an early Surrender Pafrit or worse, a Juzam Jin. Then of course with City in a Bottle, you can solve that problem. Now when we're looking at the spells, we see four crumbles. So just a lot of artifact hate here. And I think that makes sense by the way, because he's playing four crumble and also four ice storm. So if your strategy is kind of to attack the land base, win the tempo game, you really need your crumbles and scavenger folk to also take care of the Moxen and the other mana rocks. You really have to slow them down. If in, in old school, you only attack the land base, that's usually not going to be enough, especially at a tournament uh, like here where a lot of people actually have full power nine to their disposal. Um, and then there's a card actually missing. We do see four giant groves, that's kind of as to be expected, but um, we do not see, what card do you think I'm missing the most here in this deck? The Berserk. We do not see any Berserks in this deck. I would be really tempted to always play maybe one or two Berserks because it's just so explosive. Especially if you have your Pendlehaven, you can make your script sprites, for example, a 2-3, put a giant growth on it, make it a 5-6, then play a Berserk, and you're talking about 10 trample damage coming towards uh, the opponent, you know, that can be very powerful. Then again, everybody is expecting Berserk, you're not playing Berserk, that can also be a plus. It's like playing blue and not playing with counter magic, it's the same as playing mono green and not playing with Berserk. Everybody thinks you have it but in this case, you don't have it. I kind of like that as well, you know? Um, and of course, it means you've got space for other cards. For example, playing that Hurricane main, I think Hurricane is just a really good finisher in green, right? It, it's your direct damage card. Um, other options could be a Storm Seeker, but I, I personally think Hurricane is, is, is better as a finisher. You could even consider playing two Hurricanes. Um, I do love this deck photo. I love the consistency uh, of the deck. A lot of four offs, it's, it's really nice. Nice deck to look at. What I also like is the three Mazes of If in the land base there at the bottom. Uh, Maze of If is a card for a lot of people. It's a card that's all about defense, but actually it's maybe even better offensively. Having Maze of If means that you can attack with three creatures. Let's say he's got one blocker. He blocks one of your creatures on, let's say, a Sarah Angel. Then you can use your Maze. 
take the creature that's being blocked by the Sarah out of the equation so that creature doesn't die and you can still deal damage to your opponent without losing anything. So I mean, Mace, when you play aggressively, is actually kind of a must-have, but he is playing with quite a lot. You see most of these lists may be playing one, may be playing two, this one is playing three. So I'm really curious to see how that is uh, is going to work out. So this is the deck of Wouter, mono green, looking really cool Wouter, like in this list. Let's take a look at the deck of your opponent. And here we see the deck of Yap. So this is Twiddlevolt, probably, well actually it is, I can just state it as a fact, this is the best combo deck in uh, old school magic. If you don't agree, let me know in the comments below and please state which combo deck you find the best. In my experience, and there are, there are other good combo decks, not that many, but there are other good combo decks. But in my experience, this one is the best. Also, when you look at the results, this is a combo deck that has had the best results. The interesting thing of Twiddle Volt is there are like little different things, different tweaks you can do, things you can change about the buildup that you actually have a lot of different versions of Twiddle Volt. Maybe just first focus on you know, the two key cards of this deck. So we've got Time Vault, right? Time Vault is this epic old school artifact two to cast that reads Time Vault enters tapped. Time Vault doesn't untap during your untap step. If you would begin your turn while Time Vault is tapped, you may skip that turn instead if you do untap Time Vault, and then you can tap the Time Vault to take an extra turn after this one. And then of course you can combine that with Twiddle, and Twiddle is this little blue spell, one blue, untap or tap target permanent so you can use it to untap your time vault take an extra turn right and if you can somehow create a loop with twiddle and then you can keep getting twiddle back from the graveyard you can keep untapping your uh your time vault and you can keep getting turn after turn after turn what's really important in these decks is card draw card draw is kind of the oil that keeps the machine going so i think in this deck that howling mine is actually the most important card you want to have a Howling Mine in play. I think that's also the reason why he's playing one Transmute Artifact, probably to look up that Howling Mine. If you've got the Howling Mines going, if you have the card draw going, then this deck starts to function. Of course, another way to draw extra cards are the three Sylvan Libraries in this deck. That can also do the trick. Life is really a resource with this deck because once you have that kind of infinity loop of turns, you don't really care about the fact that you're on two instead of 20, right? Um, when we're looking at this deck, you may wonder, what is the win con? Well, there are there are two win cons, you could say. We uh, we have Mirror Universe, for example, the uh, card artifact from Legends for six that allows you to swap life totals. So one of the things you can do is you can make sure that you're just really, really low with the Sylvans and the City of Brasses, and then you can swap life totals. And then, you know, you can kill them with, with a very, like, low fireball or, of course, the way it, it's probably going to happen most of the time, you can kill your opponent just with one big fireball. So you just have like an endless amount of turns, then you play a huge fireball um, and you win the game. Now, what I kind of find interesting about this list, and I'm not a Twiddle Volt specialist, so please correct me if I'm saying things that are not true, but um, you also see this list a lot with stasis, but there's no stasis in here. And a card that I find really interesting in this deck is Bazaar of Baghdad. You don't see that often that people play a Bazaar of Baghdad in these builds, at least I don't. And here we see a single Bazaar of Baghdad. It makes sense because again, it's a card that just allows you to, to go through your, through your library quickly to find those key pieces you need and kind of discard the rest. Um, another important card, of course, of this deck is the Time Twister. So that's gonna make sure that you uh, are not going to be decked. And yeah, we have, of course, Yap here playing against Mono Green. For him, I think that's a really bad matchup because what you don't, what you want to play against with this deck is kind of play against slow, mid-range, slow control decks so you have some time. What you don't want to do is play against these super aggressive decks like Mono Green. That being said, once Yap has, you know, his thing going, he's going and he can definitely win this match. So it's going to be interesting. I also wouldn't be surprised if this is going to end up in a draw because remember, this is tournament magic. We have 50 minutes per round. And you know, this deck tends to take really, really long before it uh, before it wins. So that's also a scenario that's possible. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping we're gonna see a decision being made in this match. I'm just giving you, I'm giving you a fair warning. Anyway, um, this is the deck of Yap. We've discussed the deck of uh, Wouter. So that means we are ready for round number three of the Raging Bull series. Here we go. Game number one here is about to begin. Wouter on the play, starting here with the Lanover Elves turn one. So that's a good opener for him. He's on Mono Green, taking on Yap, who is on Twiddle Vault, drawing into the Time Vault there. Starting here with a Mox Sapphire, Underground Sea. 
Tapping the Sapphire, there's the Mana Vault. It's looking really good for Yapi, a great opener for him it seems. There we go. Time Walk and a Howling Mine, yeah, this is great. Good stuff here for Yapi, he'll be taking on his extra turn. Two cards in hand there, Tropical Island I believe. And that uh, Time Vault, he is going to take a damage here, going to drop to 19. And he's going to draw two cards. There's a Balance there and a Counter Spell added to the hand. There we see a Tropical Island. And that balance could come in really handy later in the game. And here we see the uh, Time Vault being played out, coming into play tapped, of course. And at the beginning of his turn, he can choose to untap it, but then he gives his turn to Wouter. And Wouter, I believe, only drawing one card there, should draw two because of that Howling Mine. Here we see a Crumble on the Time Vault. And I think with these decks, I think I would point my Crumble towards the Howling Mine, but time will tell. Anyway, uh, Yap here going up to 21 because of that crumble. And let's see what else Wouter can do. He has that Emerald Dragonfly, exactly going to play it out. 1-1 Flying Creature from a Legends. And for 2 green, you can give it first strike. And here, this is nice. Yap is reminding uh, Wouter of that extra card. He's going to take a damage. He's going to drop to 20. So thank you, Wouter, for, for you know keeping track with the dice. It, it helps us. Look at what he drew into. There is a uh, Ancestral Recall that is really good for him. And a Recall in hand as well. So he can use a Recall to get back the Time Vault. But he doesn't have to because he's drawn into another Time Vault. And I don't think that Yap has played out a land yet. So probably going to drop a land. Do we see a Twiddle in hand for Yap? I don't think so. There is his land for turn. It's a tropical island. And passing the turn, so not playing out the time vault, probably waiting for, uh, for him to draw into a twiddle and then playing out the uh, time vault and playing the twiddle on it simultaneously. That's what I kind of expect. Anyway, let's see what Wouter can do. I'm expecting way more creatures for him. And of course, Jaap does have that counter spell in hand. That Scavenger Folk is actually really, really good in this matchup. And remember, Wouter is playing with and Crumbles and Scavenger Folk, so he actually has a lot of firepower against artifacts. So Wouter tapping three here. There we see an Ice Storm, but we see a Counter Spell on the Ice Storm. And there we see the Scavenger Folk. So I'm really liking this line of play. I like the fact that first there's the Ice Storm, Yap counters that, and then after that he plays the Scavenger Folk. Because I think Scavenger Folk is like the better card in this matchup than, uh, than Ice Storm, obviously. Let's see what Yap can pick here. Ooh, there's a Twiddle, so found the Twiddle. So he definitely can play out now Time Vault and Twiddle, do the uh, decombo and take that extra turn. Is that something that he wants to do? A nice side note, by the way, you can of course also the you know, use Twiddle on your, on your Mana Vault. Not now, I think, but there could be moments in the game where that uh, may be useful. Here we see him twiddling the Time Vault. What I also like is when people play Twiddle together with Nevenroll's Disc. You also see that sometimes. It's quite nice. So he's going to untap, take an extra turn, right? I guess he uh, said that verbally. And then going to take a damage. Going to drop to 17. And going to start his turn, draw two more cards. I mean, what he needs is more Howling Mines. That's really important for him now. And he also has a Recall, of course, in hand. Could Recall for one, get the Twiddle back for another turn, draw even more cards. There's the land for turn, Volcanic Island. Yeah, I'm expecting a Recall for one here. Maybe for two, that you also take back the Ancestral Recall. Let's see what he wants to do. So understandably so, he's uh, taking a moment, but it looks like he's going to for a double recall, so I'm expecting Twiddle and Ancestral Recall to go back to hand. Ooh, and he's going to throw away the balance. I guess that's a good move, but kind of my... You do wonder, like, balance can be so good, of course, against Wouter. Ooh, he's going to get back the Time Walk instead of the Ancestral Recall. 
changing his mind. I think it makes more sense. But then again, I'm far from like an expert when it comes to, uh, to Twitter Vault, but I think it makes more sense to do what Yap now finally decided to do is get back that ancestral recall instead of the uh, the time walk. So now he's going to untap with Twiddle. He's going to take an extra turn. Or not. Yeah, so that's uh, to remind him. And now he's going to untap, upkeep, take another damage here from uh, Mana Vault. He's going to drop to 16. And he's going to draw two cards, of course. And he has an Ancestral Recall still. There's a Twiddle. He's going to take more turns. And again, I think what he needs here is another Howling Mine. So there's first the Ancestral Recall. One, two, three. Three, no Howling Mine. What's that blue card? That's a Time Twister. That's actually quite good. Time Twister could be useful here as well. Of course, going to play out the Mox for zero. Why wouldn't he? Having a Felwer Stone in hand, do you want to play out the Felwer Stone? He does have a Twiddle. Yeah, this is great for him. So he has another turn after this one. It's looking really good here for Yap. And I mean, he also had that perfect opening, right? With, uh, with the Howling Mind there in the, in the first turn and the Time Walk as well. That was, uh, was really sick. Ooh, he's going to go for Chaos Orb here. So he's going to try to kind of empty his hand before playing the Time Twister, I guess. Going to tap. Ooh, he's going to flip on the Scavenger Folk. Yeah, the Scavenger Folk is, is the fear, you know. That creature is pretty dangerous for Yap. Now, do remem remember, by the way, the recalls remove themselves from the game so they don't, uh, don't come back with the Time Twister. And I wonder if Yap is going to take another damage. He would drop to 15. I mean, it doesn't really matter for him. Yep, just dropping to 15. Then he can draw two more cards. There's the Mirror Universe. And there's a Transmute Artifact. So he could use a Transmute to actually get an extra Howling Mine, which I, th I think he's going to do. I mean, that would make sense. The only thing here is for, for, for Yap is he doesn't have a Twiddle. So he doesn't have another turn coming up. So he could also consider, he's probably just looking at the mana, how much he can afford. Because he's also thinking, you know, the Time Twister. So he's looking, what can I do? What can't I do? Mirror Universe, of course, very expensive to play out with six. So I don't expect to see that. So he's going to go here where, for Transmute. Yeah, this is perfect, right? You sack your, your Mana Vault. That was tapped anyway. And like I said, I'm expecting him here to, to pick up another Howling Mine. I mean, that's really what he needs exactly. He will have to pay one extra. There, there you go. Tapping the uh, Mox Emerald. So yeah, so far this is really Yap's game, right? So despite the fact that Mono Green is super explosive, you can see here that once Twitter Vault gets going, it's just really tough. I'm a big fan, by the way, of uh, trans Transmute Artifact. Just a beautiful card, very old school. Hard to fit into most decks though, but I, I really like it. It's gonna tap three, expecting the Time Twister here. There's the Time Twister, so we're gonna shuffle up. Yeah, if you're out there, there's nothing you can do. He stepped out. And here you can see like how, how little Time Wouter has had to actually do something, right? He could, he could just cast that one crumble to kind of try to make an impact. And that's it, basically. So Yap here on 15, Wouter on 20, and uh, 
Yeah, Yap is going to draw a fresh seven. And if he can find a twiddle in those seven cards, which is very, very likely, he can untap his time vault, take another turn, draw three more cards with the Howling Mine. But sometimes these decks kind of fizzle. And I think if you're Wouter, by the way, one of the things you have to think about in the back of your mind is, okay, how long am I going to do this? When am I actually going to give the game to Yap and just try it again in the second game? Because imagine this game taking like 45 minutes, you know, what if, and then Yap eventually wins. You don't have time to play the second game anymore, and he wins 1-0. Here we see the uh, Twiddle. So he's going to take another turn after this one. So found the Twiddle. What else does he have in hand? We see a Recall there. So he can also cast a Recall next turn to get a Twiddle back. Playing with a full play set of Recalls. Yep, yeah, going to take his extra turn. I'm going to draw three cards for turn. Also found the Sylvan Library. So I'm going to draw three cards. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, again the Ancestral Recall. So he can play his third Ancestral Recall of the game. That is pretty sick. Going to start off with a Sylvan Library. I wonder if he's going to recall for two again, that he wants a time twister back. I mean, he's got to look at the mana, right? I think he's just going to go for one, just get the twiddle back. Untap twiddle, take the turn. Just doesn't have, well, I mean, he could do double, I guess. He's got enough mana for it because he's got the underground C. Yeah, so he's going to recall for two here. Oh man, this is going to be so tough. So if you're a Wouter, I mean, I like the fact he's still there, he's looking at it, and I know he's an, he's an old school enthusiast, so he probably enjoys looking at this uh, Twiddle Vault deck. Uh, but I, I can tell from experience, I've, I would go to the bar already just to get a beer. That's also because I've played against these Twiddle Vault decks a few times, and yes, it's, a, it's really old school, and it's kind, of, it's kind of beautiful to see as well, but once you've seen the deck do the trick a few times, it's like, okay, I'm fine, I've, I've seen it, I'm fine, I'm okay. Anyway, Yap here uh, taking on another extra turn. Going to draw three cards, of course, and have the Sylvan trigger. So he can look very, very deep. Oh, there's already a Twiddle. And a Time Walk. Wow. Amazing. I really wonder when the time comes where Wouter says, you know, you've got this one, let's play the second game. Because I find it highly unlikely that uh, Yap is going to Gonna lose this. He's just drawing all the right cards to just get infinite turns. He's gonna draw an extra card from the Loa to make matters even worse. There's a uh, Time Vault from the top. And he could go here for Twiddle to take an extra turn. Yep, there he goes. So take an extra turn, put the uh, the bead there on top of the deck to indicate that there's a turn following up after this one. Also has a time walk, by the way. Could go for another extra turn. Let's see if he's going to do that. Yep. There's another one. They're multiplying. So there are two extra turns now coming up still. And Wouter kind of asking how that works. I mean, technically speaking, you could say keep the Time Vault untapped, then first take the extra turn with the Time Walk, then tap the Time Vault for a turn after that one. And now Yapa counting cards in hand. What will he do? And I guess they're now asking about it, like how this, how does this interaction work? Because both cards say you get an extra turn after this one, so isn't that then the same turn? 
But anyway, like I said, you can also say, okay, I'm going to keep the the time vault untapped, or I'm going to play the, the time walk in the other extra turn. It's just a technicality. Anyway, here we see Ancestral Recalls. He's going to draw three more cards. He does have the Fireball, so he's just trying to build a big enough Fireball. Needs 20 mana. Let's see how much mana he's got right now. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 mana. So, I mean, he's, he's got a, a while to go still. Does have two extra turns coming up. Looks like he wants to sack the Lotus, though, for a big uh, recall. So yeah, I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, I, I already know what he's going to do. going to try to get even more turns, but I just wonder when he's going to pull the trigger or if Wouter maybe is going to concede before that happens. And the Yap again uh, counting the cards in hand. Looks like he's not quite sure where to go now. Counting the cards again. Taking an extra turn. So he's going to draw... Well, of course, having the Sylvan Trigger as well. So he's going to look five cards deep here. Wow, that is luxury. We do see a lot of lands here. Another Howling Mine. So probably he's going to play out the, exactly the other Howling Mine. Remember, he also has that Loa to draw more cards. It's just, it's insane. You know, this is, this is only going to get worse for Wouter, I think. Still has that extra turn after this one. And again, we see Yap here uh, counting the cards in hand. Playing the Volcanic. Probably going to play out the Howling Mine. That's the next card that I'm kind of expecting. And he's kind of counting maybe the amount of mana. Does he want to do Fireball, Recall Fireball? Is that a thing that he's thinking about? Or is he just thinking about getting, playing a big recall for Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, and Twiddle, for example? That could also be another option. Looks like he's thinking about the Fireball route. He's got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 mana in total. So there he goes. Tapping a lot. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now are we going to see a fireball or are we going to see something else? Yeah, we are going to see a fireball on the life total, of course, of Wouter. So going to half it exactly, going to go on 10. So I'm expecting him to, uh, to get it back here with the recall and then play it again next to Remember, he's got an extra turn after this one. Okay, going to go for a Howling Mine first. Yeah, this is a perfect scenario for Yap, and I think it's really nice here to see, okay, this is how a Twiddle Vault deck is supposed to work. We have a few episodes uh, of a Twiddle Vault decks on the channel, by the way, so I'll, uh, I'll, post, uh, I'll post them in the comments below. So if you're a fan of this uh, type of magic, you can check out uh, more Twiddle Vault matchups. And look at the amount of cards, by the way, that Yap is now drawing from the top. That is just sick. There's a mana short in there. I love it. I love the fact he's playing with the mana short. I really like that art of that card. I think it's so iconic. So mana short uh, taps the lands of your opponent. And I'm expecting Yap here uh, to play the recall on the fireball. Did he find a twiddle, by the way? Because I think if you're Yap, you really don't want to give... Exactly, you're probably going to recall for the Twiddle, right? So you're going to recall for Twiddle and Fireball. So an island is pitched. Could uh, decide to pitch another island or... The Demonic Tutor, for example, is also a card you don't really need. The other, the other Time Vault you don't really need. You're going to win next turn anyway, so... It doesn't really matter what you pitch here. Oh, look at that, he's going to pitch even more. So three cards are going to go. Okay, so he played out that, uh, that island, by the way, that's next to the Loa. So three cards are coming back. He's counting again. 
Wants to make sure, of course, that he does it the right way. Exactly going to go Black Lotus, Fireball, and Twiddle. And yeah, please let us know in the comments below, by the way, how it was for you to play this deck the entire tournament, man, because that seems very intense. I couldn't do it. There's the... Uh, the Black Lotus, the untapped, so going to take an extra turn after this one, so I'm expecting him just to take that turn now and play the big Fireball. Also has that Demonic, could, uh, could cast, but why would you do that? Then you got to sec your Lotus for Black, right? Because he has no Black mana open at the moment. That Underground Sea is tapped, so I'm not expecting him to do that. Looks like he's just going to take his extra turn. Yep, so that recall is going to go to the exile pile there. So he's played three recalls already this uh, this match. He's going to draw a lot of cards here. Three Howling Mines and the Sylvan, so he can look uh, six cards deep. Anyway, he's going to play the Fireball now. He's not even going to draw. He's going to say, you know what? I got this. Here you go. He's going to count it out. And Bowser says, that's good, man. And he's going to... Well, try to sideboard against this. I guess you're just going to board in all your artifact hate. That's all you can do. Anyway, this was just game number one. So um, both of these players are going to shuffle up and sideboard. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So Valter again on the play here. Ooh, we did take a mulligan though. Starting with a lot of else passing a turn. We also see a spitting slug there. A giant grove. I think I saw a skip script sprites and another forest. Let's see if Yab can have another explosive opener here. Remember that uh, game one opener was insane. We see a Mox Ruby here on a volcanic island. Has Chaos Orb in hand, but no Howling Mine, I believe. Oh, Ancestral Recall. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> that's crazy. But the good news here for Wouter is there is no Howling Mine. So that is good. We see an Avoid Fate, by the way, in hand there for, uh, for Yab. That's kind of nice. That's a nice way you can use Avoid Fate, of course, to protect your, your Howling Mine or Time Vault from a crumble. So that's kind of cool. That's cool tech. Avoid Fate, a card that's usually uh, pretty good against the, uh, the white removal, the Disenchants and the Swords. But uh, against Crumble, it'll do the job as well. Remember, it doesn't work on, uh, on Sorceries. But that's not going to be relevant, I think, in this match. So Avoid Fate could be useful. And now Yab has to decide, I think, what he wants to discard. What is he going to throw away? Thinking about the counter spell. He's going to discard there the Chaos Orb. And passing the turn. Ooh, there's a Strip Mine. That could slow Yab down. Yeah, there's the strip. I think it's a good decision. Time will tell, of course. Now we can also uh, play out that script sprites. So it has a spitting slug, slug, giant grove, and forest in hand. And attacking for one here, Yap dropping to 19. And Yap found the time vault. But he's got two problems. And, and the problem here is that there's, there's the time vault. The problem here is that he doesn't have a Howling Mind for card draw and he doesn't have a lot of lands to work with, a lot of mana to work with. So those are the two big problems. Let's see what uh, Vauter can do playing there the forest. Did he find another Giant Grove there in hand? Or is it another card? Could of course attack him for two, but probably going to attack for one and play the Spitting Slug. He is going to attack for two. Oh, look at that. Going to be super aggressive and maybe he should, you know, you don't know how many more turns you're going to get. so. That's an attack for 8 in total. So Yap is going to drop to 11, I believe. Exactly. There's the Twiddle. No lands in hand, though, for Yap. And this is a problem, you know, because you Twiddle, you take an extra turn, but it's just one card. And Okay, it's another Twiddle. You can get another card, but... It's not looking great for Yap, but that means it's looking good for Valter here in game number 2. Finding a Mirror Universe that's not going to cut it for him. There's the pass turn. Ooh, there's an Ice Storm. Is that an Ice Storm? That is really good. Ice Storm here. Oh, making matters even worse. Oh, no, it's not going to work. It's a sorcery. It's not going to work. Yeah, that's the thing with the Void Fate. If they would 
if they would just change the cards that it would also work in a sorcery, it wouldn't be overpowered at all, but it would make so much difference. Yeah, this is really bad for Yap. He's really in a tough position. And now he finds the Howling Mine after he loses that land. That is really tough. Probably going to discard the Mirror Universe here. So I believe he's got eight in hand. Yeah, look at that pitching the Avoid Fate. He's done with the card. And this is a great, well, a great draw, but a good draw because he can attack for two, play force, play uh, Spitting Slug. So eight now for Yap. Oh, Yap really needs something good. Okay, there's a, a land. If he can find a white source, he can play a balance. But then, of course, he also discards his own hand. Wouter can now draw two. A forest and, oh, a Pendlehaven. That is quite nice. So he can Pendlehaven. He can deal two, four, five points of damage. He's on three. So it looks like Yap is going to go into his final turn. Can he find a white source for, um, no, he can't. For the balance, I wanted to say. But there's no white source in hand. I think Wouter's uh, got this game here. I mean, he can play a land recall for one, but then he has to tap out, cannot not play the twiddle for that extra turn. The problem is he doesn't have enough mana to work with here. So the mana denial plan of uh, Wouter really worked. And remember, Wouter is playing four Ice Storms, Crumble, Scavenger Folks, and of course a Strip Mine that he drew. So he's got a lot of ways to kind of destroy lands and kill the mana rocks uh, of Yap. And that is proven to be problematic here in, uh, in game number two. So Yap really kind of stuck. I don't think there's anything he can do here. Maybe I'm missing something. But I see no Twiddle in hand there. He doesn't have uh, a white source to play that balance. If he would have drawn like a City of Brass. Exactly. This is it. Wouter winning here game uh, number two. And that means we're going to go to an all deciding match number three. Game uh, number three, here we go. Yap, of course, on the play, taking a mulligan here. This is the deciding game number three. And then we're in round number three as well. Look at this opener, a Sylvan Library. That's a good start for Yap. Drop to 19, of course, because of the City of Brass. I think, you know, Sylvan, Howling Mine, just some card draw. Turn one is just great for the uh, Time Vault deck. Here we see a Script Sprites. And, of course, a Pendlehaven. That's also a, a pretty nice opener. For Wouter. And here we see some card selection. Two lands and a wheel, I believe. Oh, a twiddle as well. So a twiddle, a land, and a wheel. Not sure what Yap has in hand. And he is going to go there for the uh, Wheel of Fortune. So is he going to go Island Wheel? Looks like it, or else he wouldn't have taken the wheel. There he goes. He's going to go Island Wheel. Does mean that he has to pitch the Twiddle and the Recall. But I don't think it matters much. And uh, Vauti here losing an Ice Storm. Whirling Dervish coming in. Oh, no, he's playing that main, by the way. He's playing two Whirling Dervishes main, I believe. But anyway, losing uh, some, uh, some creatures. And I think that Ice Storm was pretty good. But Wouter, of course, uh, kind of missed that Lanawer Elves. If you have turn one Lanawer Elves, then you can go Ice Storm next turn. So seven new cards. There's a Tsunami. Is that a Tsunami, by the way, in hand for Wouter? That comes in from the sideboard. There we see a Mishra's Factory attacking for one here, probably. So uh, Yab dropping to 18. And then we're seeing a second creature. There's the Argovian Pixies, 2-1 from Antiquities. Yeah, and I think the problem now for Wouter, weirdly enough, is mana. Because, yes, he's got Tsunamis in hand, but they're quite costly. And he doesn't have any lands in hand anymore. And also, Tsunami wouldn't do that much on the current board. Only one island. Ooh, there's a Time Twister. That could be fun. Also, a Balance in hand. Sorry, in, uh, in his hands there. So, could choose to go for the Balance as well. He's going to go for the land. The Bazaar of Baghdad. Okay, didn't see that. So Bazaar of Baghdad, card from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to draw two cards, but you then immediately have to discard three cards. There's the Black Lotus. There's the Bazaar. So Bazaar of Baghdad, uh, a land when it came out that was considered really bad. 
But uh, as we know now, the card's actually pretty bonkers. So he's going to draw three cards. Nope, he's going to untap again. I mean, he's got enough stuff to discard, right? He can just pitch some lands. Okay, he's going to take it back, actually. Okay. He's going to go for Underground C. Going to tap four. Going to take another damage. Oh, there's the Urnum Jin coming in from the sideboard. That is unexpected. So he's on a 16 now, if I'm not mistaken. So not on 17 anymore. Yeah, this is tough here for Wouter. You know, he's missing a land. If he just had one more land, he could play out, uh, for example, the Spinning Slug. He's going to attack with both here. He's got, of course, a Giant Grove in hand. There's the Giant Grove. So that means six damage here for Yap. So he's going to drop to 10, I believe. And there's the pass turn. Yeah, Wouter putting him now on 11, but I, I think he's on 10. But maybe maybe he took the damage already. Maybe I made a mistake. That's possible as well. Anyway, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Yap looking at the top three cards. And uh, giving the script sprites a force walk. Not very relevant right now, but hey, you never know. So Yap on 11. And look at that, he's going to go into the red zone. Going to attack here with the uh, Urnum Jin. Going to put uh, Wouter on 16. Going to tap 4. Another Urnum Jin. So we see a whole different side of the deck now. There's the Bazaar. Passing the turn, so not using the Bazaar. So yeah, I'm kind of playing a different game here. Again, there's the attack. Of course, uh, Wouter still has... The Giant Grove, or an, another Giant Grove, I have to say. And there it is, there's the Giant Grove. Okay, and he was blocking, so they're going to exchange. And that's actually pretty good news for, for Yab, because it's a two for one for him. And we see uh, Yab dropping to 10. And also, Wouter couldn't use the Pendlehaven on the script sprite, so also preventing that one damage as well because of that block. So, very useful block. A Library of Alexandria there being picked up. And he's going to draw an extra card, it seems. So, take four, going to drop to six. So, he's going to go down to six. We see some visual effects, by the way. <laughs> That's something that happened uh, because this is footage from the live stream, so that's why you see uh, those visual effects as well, like thumbs up and uh, in this case balloons, I guess uh, it's somebody's birthday. Here we see a Loa anyway being dropped. Sack in the Black Lotus, what are we gonna see? Oh, he's gonna use the, uh, gonna play the Time Twister, of course. He needs a good seven here, because he's on six. I think if you're about there, you're kind of fine with this, because his hand was kind of awkward. Didn't have enough lands to work with it. That double tsunami, I mean, it just wasn't doing that much. So just drawing a fresh seven may help. But then again, it's very dangerous because it means Yap is also going to draw seven. Look at that amount of untapped lands that he has. And of course, he has the Bazaar and he has the Loa. So yeah, this is going to be very tricky. Wouter needs some luck here. And there, uh, there Yab goes, drawing seven. And then Wouter, of course, going to draw seven as well. Okay, so that's not a great hand for Yab. Did find the wheel, but no Howling Mine. And also no, uh, or is that a Time Vault there all the way on the back? I think so. That, that's maybe a Time Vault there. So going to drop two Moxen. Could consider using the Bazaar of Baghdad to try to find a Twiddle. Going to tap two here. And it's going to play out a Regrowth on the Time Twister. 
I wonder if we're going to see the time vault. Going to tap two. Yep, there's the time vault coming into play tapped, of course. I mean, it could use Bazaar of Baghdad and hope for a twiddle, right? Ooh, only five more turns here. Yeah, this is the thing with these decks, eh? So five more turns to go after this one. So that uh, die there at the, at the top that says five is kind of indicating the turns left. And that means that time has been cold, so they've been playing for 50 minutes. It's going to use the Bazaar of Baghdad to draw three cards and has to discard, or draw two cards and has to discard three cards. And he has found the Ancestral Recall. But yeah, it's going to be really tough for Yap uh, to still win this. I think we're heading for a draw, but let's see. You never know. Oh, there's an Avoid Fate. <laughs> Again, so he did keep in the Avoid Fates. Didn't board them out after that second game. Has a Demonic as well. Going to tap the Ruby for the Mana Vault, probably. Ah, there's no twiddle in there, is it? Is there, I mean. Don't think there's a twiddle. He needs to twiddle for an extra turn to untap the vault. And there's a pass. Okay, so this is turn number five. More balloons. <laughs> Why do we have all those balloons? Who knows? Anyway, um, Wouter's turn here now. Yeah, this is turn five exactly. So it's going to stay on five. Oh, okay. Or not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Exactly. I think this is Wouter's now turn five. The active player finishes his turn and then the five extra turns start. But of course, we don't have the, uh, the audio, so we don't know what's being, what's being set from the sidelines. Here we see uh, a forest coming in. And there's an Argovian Pixies, the attack for one, he can pump it up. So that means that Yap's going to drop to four. So actually, Wouter is very close to winning it here, but close isn't good enough, especially against Twiddlevolt. And now we see Yap, uh, he's going to untap everything. Oh, wow. This is going to be a very important turn for Yap. If he just passes, he's dead. It's just, well, probably dead. It's as simple as that. But I don't think he's going to do that. So first off, he can look at the top three cards with the Sylvan. And choose the best. Has a recall there that seems to be the best option. Or maybe go for the land. Not quite sure. Okay, he's going to go for the land. Not quite sure if he has a land in hand. I guess not, or else he wouldn't go for the land. So going to go for the land, Tropical Island. Going to play that out. Now remember, he has a Demonic Tutor in hand as well. Yeah, this is a really important turn for Yap. There's a Tropical Island. Looks like he's going to play the Demonic now. Or at least thinking about it. Also has a, a counter spell in hand, but that's not going to be very relevant. He's got that Avoid Fate. And of course, the uh, Time Twister still is first going to attack for four. Ooh, and he's actually going to block. I would have considered, it's easy, of course, from this position, but I think I would have just taken the four. You know, go to eight, who cares? But we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. Uh, Yap, you're playing the, uh, the demonic. Going to do some shuffling. Let's see what we're going to get. Ooh, there's the twiddle. There's a twiddle for the extra turn. 
So it's going to go to three. Not yet, though. You have not taken the turn yet. It's got a lot of mana, of course, still available. Can do a lot of stuff. For example, play to recall, get the twiddle back. Also has that mana vault that he can tap, of course. So, for example, could play a recall for two, get the twiddle back and the ancestral recall. Could be an option. So now, now it gets interesting with that Urnum Jin, of course, because if he can keep getting extra turns, he can keep attacking with the Urnum Jin. He needs three attacks, right, with the Urnum Jin. Here we see a recall. Yeah, gonna get back to twiddle. Ooh, and the demonic, okay. I wonder what he then wants to demonic. Would you then want a demonic of fireball if you're like really close? So now he's gonna take his extra turn, of course, gonna take no, he's not gonna take a damage. Manifold wasn't tapped, so he's gonna stay on four. Gonna look at the top three cards. Let's see what he has. Recall, another Sylvan and Island. So it's not great. Gonna go for the recall. Of course, because then he can recall the twiddle. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is getting interesting. This Urnum is uh, is uh, is a very powerful weapon. Look at that. Wouter dropping to eight. He can twiddle for another turn, can put him on four. There's a recall. Oh, and he wins it here. Wow, of course, because then he attacks, puts Wouter on four, recalls Twiddle, play another turn, kill Wouter. Wow, yap, man, yap. I got, got to give credits when credits do, man. This was a beautiful win in game three. I didn't see that coming. I wasn't thinking about it at all until you were already in the middle of what you were doing. And wow, you're killing Mono Green with a Mono Green staple that actually... Uh, Wouter is not playing, which is kind of funny. And Wouter is playing two City in a Bottle's main that he probably boarded out after the first game. That's at least what I would have done. Although you could say City in a Bottle is good because you've got City of Brass, you've got Loa, you've got uh, Bazaar of Baghdad. So I guess you could, you could argue that maybe you should have kept City in a Bottle in, but maybe you did actually. Both players kind of showing now uh, how they sideboarded, by the way. So of course taking the mazes out, that makes sense about it when you play against an almost creatureless deck. So remember the Urnums of course came in from the sideboard for you. And I wonder if he kept in the City in the Bottles. I think maybe he did because of course City in the Bottle is land destruction, which uh, works uh, really, really well against Yab. So um, so I guess, I guess he did, maybe. Let's see, let's have a look. Yep, see, so kept the city in the bottles in there. Yep, that makes sense. And that was round number three here. And I have to admit, that was way more entertaining than I thought. This was a really, really great match. Thank you both for showing your skills here on the channel. Uh, please join me again next week because then I have another really cool match for you. I have a round number four match. Yakmov's Skull by Yurian is taking on Lich Combo by Thomas. So another combo deck next week. And I mean, again, look at these two decks. This has, to, this has to be a great match as well. So please join me next week. Uh, if you want to make sure that you don't miss any updates here off the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and before you go, one other thing that uh, I'd like to ask you to do, and that is to share, comment, and like this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. YouTube loves it when you do that stuff. Another thing that you can do is, uh, of course, becoming a patron of the show. Like I said in the introduction, check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information. And, uh, you know, the patrons are really what's, uh, what's keeping this channel afloat. So please consider becoming a patron as well. It already starts with just $1 a month. And uh, if you support me on the tier two level, so $2 and up, then your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Samba Kazik.